Hello everyone. In today's flight, we're enjoying this nice, relaxing trip. Uh, you know, we just got back from uh, Martha's Vineyard. Everything is uh, just going swimmingly and smoothingly. And for some reason, I'm having some weird nastiness uh, with my little left engine here. I'm noticing the load factor is going down and the RPM's coming down. Looking down through everything else, uh, something seems to be going a little weird with that engine. I'm going to go take a quick peek at it. Um, I don't see it uh, anything weird. It's not trailing this you know, black smoke or anything like that. So that makes me feel a little bit more confident. But the power is uh, slowly decreasing. I'll go ahead and split my throttles real quickly. Give everybody a quick little wiggle. See if that's uh, doing anything for me. It doesn't seem to be doing... Okay, it looks like we got our power back for a second there. Uh, it starts dropping down again, even when I push the throttle forward. I think it's safe to say I'm noticing the fuel flow must be restricted in some way as well. You know, I think there's something wrong with this engine. As a matter of fact, um, I told Microsoft Flight Simulator to set this thing on fire for us, but unfortunately it did not work. So we're going to have to go ahead and uh, see these big bulging black flames, and we're going to have to get this thing ready to go. So this is a Diamond 62. Uh, one of the things I love about this aircraft is um, you can basically shut things on and off with a single button. Click! And goodbye, Mr. Engine. So that engine normally in the real world would go all the way down to low speed and it would start feathering. So we've got a problem. Uh, we've got to put this thing darn on the ground. And unfortunately, we are operating with only one single engine working right now. Now, when you, anybody who's ever flown a twin engine plane, uh, this is the scenario you practice a million and one times. Uh, the reason we practice it so many times is because the probability that this could happen is actually... Um, you know, about the same as losing a single engine in a regular plane. But there's new problems we're going to be facing. So I need to get this thing down on the ground real, real quickly here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to identify which one of these two engines is going to be the one that's dead. Now, in the real world, you can feel the dead engine because when you push this rudder like this, you're going to feel the entire aircraft. There's no resistance. The whole plane kind of jerks to one side. But when I push the uh, rudder like this, it would require significant physical force in order to keep it straight. Uh, the expression you're always going to hear is a uh, dead foot, dead engine. That's basically what that represents. Again, that sucker is uh, all sorts of nasty on fire right now. I'm actually going to shut its fuel off completely because I really don't want this thing to uh, get any worse as far as the invisible fire of which uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator says we're experiencing, but I don't actually feel like we're experiencing at this time. So what I hope this aircraft would do is it would automatically feather like the real one does, but it doesn't seem like it wants to feather, which is kind of scary. I'm actually going to go continue securing that engine here. Okay, so now what do we need to worry about here? Well, the problem we have now is we have one working engine on one side of the plane and one not working engine on the other side of the plane. So if I were to slow the aircraft down uh, very aggressively, I'll just hold the nose up just a teeny tiny bit, and I were to jam on the gas, the whole plane would twist. I'm sure you folks saw that pretty distinctively as that started to happen. So the reason that happens is we now have an asymmetric thrust condition. Now the problem with an asymmetric thrust is if we try to slow this plane down too far and we try to jam on the gas, what's going to happen is we're going to run into a situation where we can't control the plane. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back. I'm going to bring our plane a little bit slower, get under of EYSE is what it's called. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, jam full power again. And I can't actually fight that with the... Oh! We can see that... Oh. We could see how dangerous of a condition that could have put us in, given that um, now that that throttle, you know, we don't have enough rudder to beat the asymmetrical thrust that we do. So that's why you have something called the VYSE. The VYSE is going to be our speed that we can travel with one engine and operative. On a Diamond 62, that works out to be about 87 knots, depending on your weight. Now, even more importantly, we have a minimum controllable speed known as MCA. That's going to be the speed where we can still have enough rudder action to beat the aircraft itself. This particular aircraft, if you have your flaps in the up position, is going to be 76 knots. If they're in takeoff, it goes down to 70 knots. So as long as we can keep that aircraft greater than that speed, we run no risk of accidentally, so to speak, out of the aircraft now. So now, what do we need to do with that information? Well, if we had uh, just one of these engines working, as long as we keep our speed above 76 knots at all times, we should have enough control authority to safely operate the plane. Now, what does that mean when we go to land the plane? Well, fortunately for us, so we're not too, too far away from some trouble down here. And we're going to go ahead and uh, bring our plane down and uh, actually try to land this sucker. So when we approach now, we have to remember that once we drop those flaps, our effective speed is going to uh, decrease, meaning with the flaps down, we actually have more authority added disposal. Now, I think that finds kind of interesting how that works, and uh, we'll do a quick little demonstration during our approach, too, so you folks can see kind of the downside. Now, isn't it so lucky that I picked a place that had a beautiful runway right there? Now, one of the interesting things is in the real world, when I was uh, practicing for my own private pilot's license, uh, we did a scenario very similar to this, but we only had one engine to fail. And you can imagine how exciting it is trying to get the plane on the ground precisely with a one missing engine. Of course, with a twin engine plane, as long as we stay above that magical MCA speed, we don't have to worry. Now, if we wanted to, we could put ourselves into a very steep spiral and go ahead and bring the plane down very quickly.
<laughs> if this doesn't make you dizzy, I don't know what does. There's actually a more extreme version of this if you want to lose altitude in an extreme hurry. And again, if it's an emergency, you do everything you need to do to safely get the plane to the ground. Uh, one of the nasty things you could do if this ever happened to you, of course, is uh, if you pull back too hard, you're going to run into a situation where you're going to overstress the aircraft. So now we have to be starting to think about our maneuvering speed, our VA, as well. I uh, may, rather. I'm right, just going to keep on spiraling down. That runway 27 looks absolutely wonderful. We still have a working engine, but there's no guarantee that the fire in that left engine hasn't started spreading into the rest of the aircraft at this point. So I don't know about you, but I want to get this plane down to the ground as fast as I possibly can. Okay. Notice, by the way, we're maintaining over that magical speed. I'm starting to pick up some speed. We don't want to go too fast, otherwise you're going to exceed your maneuvering speed in the plane. It's basically going to come apart on you. I'm going to keep on spiraling. I'm so dizzy. <laughs> That's just fun, isn't it? All right, I'm just going to keep the spiral going. Now, it's great because we have that beautiful uh, G1000 uh, display there that lets us know exactly you can even watch the airport go by each time I spiral downwards. Now, if I were a glider, this is pretty standard go-to technique here. But uh, for us, like I say, we're just trying to get this plane on the ground as fast as possible. Okay, look at my airspeed. Like I said, as long as I can stay over 76 knots, I'm never going to get under that uh, minimum controllable speed. I don't have to worry about it too, too much here. But remember, if I needed to make the plane go back up, the magic minimum speed would drop down to 89 knots so that we could smoothly get a little bit of altitude out of this thing. Now, the Diamond 62s are terribly overpowered, so you can actually do quite a bit on one engine here. Continue spiraling down. Oh, I'm starting to run out of energy, which means I'm starting to get low. Delightful. All right, let's go ahead and bring up that one engine. Now, this is where it gets precarious. I don't want to add any drag to this airplane unless I absolutely have to. And looking down, I'm starting to get a little bit dangerously close to that minimum controllable speed. All right, we're going to bring ourselves around. There's the runway. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and slap the landing gear down. Go ahead and knock my flaps all the way down. Now, remember what it said in the book. As long as we can safely maintain a speed of 70 knots, we'll have no issue with having one missing engine. But in this particular case, I'm feeling pretty confident that we have to go around. Going down, going down. Plane looks good. Oh, no, there's another airplane on the runway. Going to go give it full power. Now, keep ourselves right at 87 knots. Clean up the plane. Clean up the plane. And there we go. So now, look what would have happened had we allowed this aircraft to uh, get under that magical speed. We would not be able to have been safely able to climb out. So now notice, I'm holding it laser guided at the 87 to 89 knots, because that's going to give me my best controllability, as well as my best climb rate. Now I'm looking over right now, and I can see that my climb rate is about 450 knots. Now I have to resist the urge to pull back, because the slower we go, the less control we're going to have with that particular dead engine that's over on our side. That should be feathering. So but as long as I keep these speeds here, I'll have my controllability and I'll barely be able to get myself a little bit of altitude. Like I said, you have to resist the urge to try to pull past that point because we're going to not have enough controllability to operate the plane safely. Now, I wish that guy wouldn't park his airplane because I was having an emergency in the middle of the runway. But at the very least, you were able to see how we were able to safely recover without actually uh, putting ourselves in extreme danger. Other than the fact that basically, you know, at the same altitude as that mountain right on my side. So hopefully this video is helpful as far as uh, understanding why, you know, the asymmetrical thrust can be dangerous as well as how to make it so that you can kind of get around it now we could go around of course and land the plane safely and i wouldn't worry too too much about it of course that one jerk who took the runway will probably be there again but other than that i just want to show you why that speed is so important enjoy